I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. His creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe. In the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men and women to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage in the rage of the powers when they struggle to be free. And in the violence and conflict, which even now threaten the love of the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the black nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness, from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe, I believe, I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnants of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by God with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and programs of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Call this 5309 Martin Luther King Boulevard for the We Are One free food giveaway. This giveaway takes place every Saturday from 11 until 1 or until the food run out. These days, lots and lots of people are in this line, so we're here, uh, you know, just donating back to the community. Yeah, we're here uh, with the African uh, Cultural Festival. Um, and we're helping to box food up for the food bank for people in the community. They service about 200 individuals here in the community. So we know we're happy to help. We know that they, you know, food is the best uh, drug, honestly, you know, and it's especially important for preventative health. So they have fresh fruits, vegetables that they're boxing up for the community. And so, you know, we're happy to see that they are servicing fresh fruits and vegetables to the community. Um, and, you know, we're just here to, to be of assistance in some way. We've been doing this for two years right here. Definitely partnering with the Shrine uh, and the Food Bank. And uh, so many volunteers just here giving back every Saturday. Even when it's cold like today, we still have so many people out here. Come 
to the place for which our Father sighed. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory. Welcome to the Shrines of the Black Madonna, where we believe in you being your best self. We invite you to partake in our worship experience. Come with an open mind and an open heart. Sing, dance, and clap your hands. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Giving is an opportunity for us to build community, ministry, health, and best self. Tap into your greatness that God has already placed inside of you and share it with the world. We would love to see you more often. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get connected and stay connected online with the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. Worship, join, learn, give, connect with us all in one place in just three easy steps. One, go to our landing page via our link tree URL or QR code. Two, browse our selections and decide what you want to do and where you want to go. Three, Click on your choice and we'll take you right there. Yes, in just three easy steps, you can worship, join, learn, give, all in one place. So get connected and stay connected with us online at the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. Baba and Bayou Chewy, I want to talk to you about the power of social reality. We all have a brain, right? Well, at least we've been told we do. But how does our brain really operate? How does it allow us to think, feel, move, act, and experience the world? Even though we are mostly unaware, our lives actually take place in more than one mode of existence. The reason we're unaware is because our brain allows us to traverse these various layers of reality very seamlessly. We live within multi-dimensions of reality simultaneously without ever distinguishing one from the other. It's kind of like breathing. We don't really think about it, we just do it. We have a physical reality shaped by the external realm, things we see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. 
But there's also an internal realm, a mental reality, which consists of a made up world. Social science is commonly called social reality. Social reality is one of the complex ways our brain processes, analyzes, and interprets life. For example, we acquire food and other material goods with something we call money. Money can be represented by pieces of paper and metal coins, or it can be represented by small pieces of plastic we call credit or debit cards, or it can even be represented by electromagnetic waves flowing through the air, transferring from Africa to America at the click of a button. But all of these representations are completely made up. We all actively and willingly agree that these various things are all forms of money. This is the nature of the made up world we are all participating in every single day. Centuries ago, our African ancestors used money represented by salt, shells, beads, cloth, copper, gold, or some other natural resource that we traded for the things we needed. So for centuries, human society, our entire lives, have been spent in a world of social reality, which exists only inside our collective human brains. Think about geography. If I leave my home right here in Detroit and drive across the Blue Water Bridge, all of a sudden I'm in Canada. Although nothing in the physical environment, nothing in biology or physics or chemistry determined that social reality. The borders between our cities, states, and countries are not real but only imagined. We say that when the arc of the Earth's rotation around the sun reaches a certain point, we are in March or May or some other month. These distinctions are all made up. There is no July up in the sky. Months are only socially real. Are you keeping up? The Earth itself is made up of rocks, grass, trees, hills, deserts, and oceans all a part of a physical reality. So when we talk about social reality, we are simply saying that as a group, we collectively impose new meaning or function on our physical features. Time is another social construct. On the first Sunday of November, when we turn our clocks back in the fall, bringing an end to daylight savings time, nothing in nature has changed. Daylight savings time did not really buy us some time but it gave us more hours of light in the evenings. Think about what happens in our brains when we dream. Key emotional and memory related structures of the brain are reactivated while we sleep. In our dream state, colors are more vibrant, emotions are intense, people can show up who may either be living or dead, all while our brain is free of a key stress chemical which shows which allows us to process even the most upsetting memories in a safer, calmer environment we call dreams. While these dreams seem real, they are merely hallucinations which may or may not have any direct connection to our physical reality. Just like with social reality, dreams are yet another part of our imagined or made up reality. Now I want you to go back to the beginning of these United States of America. The social reality, the story that was created, handed down by the founding fathers, went something like this. We were just sailing along, trying to find a new route to India, China, Japan, and the Spice Islands to bring back rich cargoes of silk and spices to our Lord and King Fernand II, the Catholic monarch of Spain. When lo and behold, Chris Columbus discovered a brand new world. Yeah. Sure, there were 500 nations of Native Americans already living here, but for the sake of social reality, we'll say we discovered America and all these Aboriginal folks already living here. In short order, we were able to subdue the natives by displacement, disease, destroying their buffalo, and killing them through slavery, rape, and war, allowing a few remnants to survive to help us build a new nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, we really don't mean all, all, just all of us, 
the poorest of the poor rejects from Spain, England, France, and the Dutch Republic. The early years didn't do exactly what we had planned, as the natives were easily able to escape our clutches because they were more familiar with the land. Many chose death rather than to convert to our Catholic faith. And so we had no choice but to turn elsewhere for help in building this new world, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Well, not, not equal, equal, just equal as it applies to other men of European descent. So to save our new nation, we decided to set up a triangular trade system using the ingenious minds and strong, sturdy backs of Africans, whom we found for the sake of social reality living primitive, backward, and unchristian lives in the jungles, waiting desperately for our white missionaries to come and save them. Well, a few hundred turned into a few thousand, turned into tens of thousands, turned into hundreds of thousands between 1525 and 1866 who were enslaved in the New World. Well, not the new, new world, but the new reality of chattel slavery as a 24-7, 365 days of the year lifetime of his heroic, historic, and unthinkable ruling work, punishment, pain, sweat, blood, heartache, tears, and death. Yeah, those tenacious, warm-hearted, spiritual, and resilient Africans really built this country with their bare black hands from the ground up. God knows without them, there would be no American democracy, no American wealth, no American culture, no American anything, if you tell the truth. But I digress. The social reality we created said we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, for we do ordain and establish the Constitution of the United States of America. You see, there was no trickery involved. We agreed from the onset in the idea of a democracy of the people, by the people, for the people, to include those of us who shared similar Euro ancestry so as not to confuse future generations about whom our social reality was created to support, protect, and serve. Speaking of supporting, protecting, and serving, once again, those proud Africans who built this country also fought, bled, and died in every single war battle conflict ever fought on this hallowed land. But our social reality only implied support, protection, and service to those who are direct descendants of the founding fathers and none other shall inherit a new birth of freedom in this government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Well, maybe not people, people, but we are referring to the supreme people of the Caucasoid phenotype who pillaged, borrowed, stole, imitated, and unjustly acclimated civilization from African people and every other non-Euro culture on the planet. You see, the bottom line is, this social reality known as democracy is, always has been, an experiment created to serve the needs and interests of a specific set of people. The dominant power group, which initially claimed to have rediscovered this brand new world. The true power of social reality is not in its moral foundation, its factual or evidence-based knowledge, nor any right set of core values. Its power rests solely upon one thing, the strategic use of propaganda to support and reinforce said reality. For example, say a presidential candidate claims the election was stolen, then proceeds to mobilize a gang of domestic terrorists falsely claiming to be patriots to overtake the U.S. Capitol and overthrow the election results and force a coup. But it doesn't stop there. Then voting districts are redrawn. New restricted voter laws put into place to suppress the popular vote at the local, state, and federal level. Then the narrative begins to declare that up is down, right is wrong, and the lie is dressed up in the clothes of the truth.
But it doesn't stop there. Fear-mongering in all forms are unleashed using crime, violence, and fear to push the narrative that Republicans are good, strong, and tough and can make America heavenly great again while Democrats are bad, weak, and liberal and are making America hellishly worse for white men. But it doesn't stop there. The Second and Fourth Amendments are called into question while taking back women's rights to choose under the guise of the fetus having the most to lose. You see, despite what we've been told, America was never really a democracy. It was first set up as a republic, one nation under a groove, getting down just for the fuck. Oops, sorry, wrong song. Oh, say, can you see? You see, after 400 plus years, the demographics in America have dramatically changed. It appears, therefore, to our great disappointment that this democratic agreement no longer serves us. So it must be abandoned with all deliberate speed. The consensus of attitudes, opinions, and beliefs held by members of the power group recognizes that it no longer is a majority. And so a new social reality must be created heretofore. The bottom line is that everything we humans create, including ourselves, has an expiration date. And democracy has seen its final days, for God's sake. So to create this new social reality, all we have to do is what we did before. Agree that American democracy is dead and arm ourselves to destroy anyone who challenges our idea of creating a new normal. Creating social reality is just that simple. Just agree to a new view of the world around us and allow that new view to influence our choices and decisions. Moving forward, the social construction of reality theory says it best. Our reality is not a set of objective arrangements outside ourselves, but rather a constructed reality through our interactions with others. So my question to you is, if white America has all but abandoned democracy, where does that leave those of us who have for the past 400 years longed to be one day included in this so-called American dream? Langston Hughes said it best in his poem, Harlem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Or does it stink? like rotten meat, or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? If social reality is an agreement made by a group of people who decided to impose an idea on their physical reality, then what new social order we will create for ourselves and our children and our future is what matters. What new social reality must we create to ensure the survival of African people everywhere in the world and build the power we need to live as a self-determined people in the world? We must build a nation within a nation with all of the institutions we need to live, thrive, and survive. Our social reality must include the vision of an independent, morally sound, value-driven, economically sustainable, and self-empowered Pan-African world community. There is power in social reality, but for us, black people, Mammy Tammy's baby, son folks, the people of African descent, that power must rest upon the simple premise that nothing is more sacred than the liberation of black people. Ashe and Amen.
Come on.